And again, just as a reminder, this we included this as an example of how SCL can be integrated into existing academic classrooms without necessarily a separate curriculum, but still keeping the academic focus. I think I'm seeing some thumbs up. So I will share the screen again and we can move on a bit. So just as a summary, again, here, uh, as you know, in To Kill Mockingbird and Alexandra Hancock is considered a villain by our narrator, Scout Finch, because she forces traditional ideals of femininity on her. And in this paper, we analyzed why Hancock's ideas of femininity differ so deeply from Scout's and considered factors such as Hancock's age, her commitment to her family, and her exposure to tr to traditional Southern values when forming this analysis. By getting behind the motives of certain characters and attempting to understand them in a new light, students exercise their empathy skills and their ability to logically consider the differences in the backgrounds and values of others. So we've also come up with some topics specifically related to emotional intelligence, which we're looking for in a curriculum. Uh, if we go down the next slide. These things could also be implemented as a unit in health class. Uh, these topics focus very heavily on communication between students, since one way or another, a student will find themselves in a position where someone has reached out to them for help. Of course, we are in no way claiming to be experts, so these are just some ideas of what we believe would be important in such lessons from our perspective. So we effectively separate this lesson into targeting two perspectives, the supporter and the person reaching out for help. Although people with serious issues need to be directed to professional help, it's inevitable that a student will find themselves in a situation where a friend has come to them with mental health concerns. These students need to be taught how to show the necessary type of compassion and just what to say to someone. Some things we believe should be targeted in this lesson are generally how to provide support, asking questions about what the person reaching out needs at the moment, and recognizing signs of suicide. However, this type of stuff is very heavy and, of course, not something that a teenager should be expected to completely handle. So while students should be able to support their peers, many will find themselves sucked into situations where they've taken on more than they can healthily deal with. So they must also be able to recognize personal boundaries and protect themselves from emotional burnout. Now for the student reaching out for help. On the next slide. Oh, sorry. Okay. Since many aren't in the right situation to reach out for professional help, reaching out to friends and peers can help save a life. Uh, because, these, because handling these emotions is such a difficult thing for anyone to do, it's essential that people learn to ask for consent so that people that they're reaching out to are in the right mindset to help. But this is something that many tend to overlook. So people must know how to appropriately reach out without overstepping boundaries. But of course, teenagers can only handle so much, so they must still be given resources that they can use for professional help. So essentially what we wanted you to get out of this presentation thus far and all those papers that we made you read was SEL integration will help our counseling department and students alike. So SEL will be playing a dual role of encouraging personal growth in all students by equipping them with the necessary tools to deal with commonplace mental health issues and correspondingly freeing up counselors so that they can work more closely with students who are truly unable to handle serious health problems. All right, so in these next couple of slides, we will be reviewing our uh, the SEL curriculums, um, and we do want to sort of share what us as students, what we would like to see in an SEL curriculum. But before we do that, we do want to get your input on what you guys would like to see in an SEL curriculum. So if you guys want to comment that in the chat, um, and then we can go over those, and then we will go forward. And examples of these would, for example, be uh, 
identifying internal emotions or conflict management or cyberbullying or other matters like that. Hi, Vanit, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, could you please repeat the question again? I think the audio was very low, so I couldn't. Okay, hear. yeah. So we're just sort of wondering what you guys would like to see um, as parents, as educators, as fellow students, um, what you guys would like to see in an SEL curriculum for kids K through 12. So anything like ranging from um, cyberbullying, depression, um, anything like that. Yeah. Uh, yes. Ready. Hi. Um, I would like to see topics um, relating to peer pressure, maybe in the younger age, mm -hmm. perhaps elementary school. And I'll just be typing these in the chat so we can keep a record of what we've said so far. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Go ahead, Yajing. I think your microphone might be on mute. <clears throat> what did I do? Okay, good. So I have a question on the background. So the SEL is provided to all level of students. So are we trying to do a trial uh, class uh, for, for let's say American high school or what is the goal here? I think in our presentation, we mentioned different ways that SCL could be integrated into the classroom, but it is my understanding, uh, and uh, Ms. Kelly, totally correct me if I'm wrong on this, but it's my understanding that SCL wouldn't be its own class. It would be integrated along with teacher training and into the health curriculum. And mm -hmm. Ms. Kelly, would you like to say something more on that? Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. And I, um, the SCL curriculum that we're in the process of adopting would be um, something that teachers would present to students at some sort of a regular interval. And we're still early enough in the adoption process that I don't know how often that would be and exactly what that would look like. But it would be specific direct instruction around things like uh, recognizing your own emotions, responding to your own emotions, supporting peers, um, dealing with stress, all, all of those kinds of things. One of the things I love about uh, the, this presentation, though, is that there's the acknowledgement that truly supporting student mental health and social emotional learning doesn't just happen, you know, one period a week for 20 minutes or something. It really is a topic that should be woven into all of what we do at our schools, just literally from the minute a student walks onto campus things should be structured in such a way to help people be confident and happy and healthy. And so I love how you guys have talked about integrating it into everyday topics as well. Okay, thank you for, for the, while well, I was late in joining the meeting. And uh, so, so right now that uh, we are asking Mrs. Kelly, we're asking the students to give uh, the feedback and also ask them to write papers, right? So we are taking their pre presentation as part of the research. Is that uh, is that we are seeing today? Um, the reason that the uh, students are here is that they had done um, an extensive survey last year. And then from the results that they saw of that, they, they became really solution oriented and said, OK, well, if students are having these challenges, what uh, might we be able to do as a system to help with that? And they put together this presentation and then approached me and said, would it be OK if we presented it? And I really liked it. And I thought the CNI advisory committee was the right group of people to hear it. So that's what they're here doing is presenting the results of their survey and then also their suggestions. Okay. Yeah. And also to add on to that, I do believe that we have an allotted time for questions and concerns and other stuff like that after the presentation. And I feel like what we're, we're going to say in the upcoming slides might be an answer to a lot of your questions as well. So okay. would it be okay if we moved on? Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Let me share this again. 
And Vinny, you can take it from here. All right, awesome. So what are we as students looking for? So we've organized these by very important, important and things that were also, and things that are considered. And then on the side, um, we have something that while we were looking through um, different programs, we didn't find them anywhere, but we still think is very important. So um, we want, we definitely want diversity, inclusion, and cultural awareness, considering that majority of the population um, among students, at least in FUSD, they all come from different cultural backgrounds. So this is definitely very important. Anger, anxiety, depression management. I think this is a, definitely a huge one. Um, personally, I have been going to therapy and it's been helping me a lot. And I know that a lot of my peers, they don't have the same access to that, but they are going through similar things that I am. So I think this could help a lot. Um, emotional awareness, crisis management, and perspective analysis, sort of so self-introspection. Um, for important, we have digital online awareness. Again, this is becoming very important, seeing that technology is becoming a huge part of our day-to-day -day lives. Um, identifying and conveying emotions. Also identifying bullying and harassment and battling absenteeism and crime. Um, also on the side, we have modernized sexual assault harassment education. It's something that we find really, really important, I think, um, as we go on, but it's not something that we found in any of the reviewed curriculums. So, yeah. Okay, so sort of kick it off here. The first curriculum that we looked into was positive action. It's available from grades K through 12, and it's also available in Spanish from K through eight. We found that it was mostly focused on individual improvement of mental health through self-reinforcement. And this well serves the SCL goal of managing emotions, and it has been proven to be especially applicable in stopping crime on campus. It places a very high emphasis on conflict resolution, which may serve as a good seg into diversity and inclusion curriculums. But while it does offer ways for educators to integrate diversity and inclusion into their curriculum, it is not there as a topic explicitly in and of itself. It has also been had proven significant outcomes with crime prevention, absenteeism, and substance abuse among its uh, the older students that were subject to it. And lessons combine activities, texts, and presentations and lesson plans, which serves to make a much more engaging classroom. We also reviewed Second Step, which is available for on the elementary and middle school levels, though not on the high school level. We found that this was mostly focused on child protection and bullying prevention rather than internal healthy habits, which definitely is an, a part of the SCL goals, but we did find that it was lacking in other areas that we thought were very important factors to consider when adopting an SCL curriculum. It has proven outcomes with classroom engagement at the kindergarten level, but interpersonal and personal outcomes do not have as much evidence. And this may be an issue considering that SCL reinforcement becomes all the more important as the child ages. It provides SEL education for educators as well, so as to foster the curriculum in all aspects of the classroom. But it also tends to focus on more formulaic videos and lesson plans as a method of distributing information, which we felt might not be engaging, especially for younger children. So if we were to adopt this curriculum, it would need um, some remodeling when it's being actively integrated into the classroom. So next for Harmony, it's a free kindergarten through sixth grade curriculum, which is already being implemented across school districts. And it has on demand and live training for teachers, which we find important since teachers should also be able to access this type of stuff. Uh, we have been able to access sample lessons and a toolkit. And we found that the lessons took into account learning shifts in the pandemic focus on emotional intelligence and have information on identifying and conveying emotions. This also includes lessons based around learning socioeconomic and cultural differences that impact the classroom. We find this last part extremely important as we said before, because at least through our experiences, we didn't learn much about this in the classroom until high school. Harmony, however, addresses these topics at a much earlier age, which is essential to developing greater empathy in children. So next slide. And Lion's Quest. 
Lions Quest has curriculums for kindergarten through 12th grade, which is heavily focused on conveying and identifying emotions, but it seems to progress a little bit slowly with 12th graders learning very similar lessons on anger management and other emotions as middle schoolers, which is not to say that this isn't important because it is, but it feels almost overemphasized. There was also a large portion about bullying harassment, which is important, but given that we have numerous lessons and presentations on bullying pretty much every year, it's not at the forefront of our concerns for an SEL curriculum. There also wasn't much on socioeconomic and cultural differences, but again, we couldn't access all of the lessons, only the ones that were uh, available to the public. And what we could see is that there is a unit centered around leadership and community, so that unit may have the potential to cover those bases. All right, so the team for the Teen Connection Project promotes SEL through lessons, classroom management, relationship building, and student voice, as well as a lot of heavy emphasis on behavior management. Schools that use the Teen Connection Project reported change within students after 12 weeks of implementation. However, there is unfortunately not a lot of emphasis on cultural disparities or equity, which is something that the district needs considering as I said before, majority of students come from very different cultural backgrounds. Okay. Um, so based education, the programs provided by BASE start as young as kindergarten. From kindergarten to grade five, students will learn how to manage their emotions and communicate them well. They will also learn digital safety, which as we all know, as I said earlier, is incredibly crucial nowadays, knowing that technology has become a huge part of our day-to-day -day lives. As, as children get older from grades, Six through 12, students will learn more in depth for how to manage emotions, specifically anger, anxiety, and depression. They'll also learn how to make smart decisions and how to avoid exploitation. So based on our review of these curriculums, we've picked two that we lean towards, harmony and base education. Both of these curriculums focus on identifying and communi communicating emotions and socioeconomic differences that impact the classroom. These are two subjects that, as, we, as we've emphasized, we find extremely important in a prospective SEL curriculum and are essential to developing empathy and communication skills at an, at an early age. They both also have lessons based around addressing shifts in learning after the pandemic. And we highlight a couple of the more notable, notable differences between the two, being how many years each has a curriculum for and the fact that Harmony is free. So and thank we, you so much. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, we're grateful to have such a receptive curriculum board here. And if there are any more questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to speak out about it. And we'll be looking over uh, uh, the chat as well. And I will also be sharing the link to this presentation in the chat so that we can look over it if you need to. I don't, did it go through? Yeah. It's not in the chat yet though. Oh. Uh, does everyone see it now? Yes, it's in the chat. Okay. There we go. Okay, yeah, Lisa, go ahead. Perfect. All right, well, I, I, I really yes. want to thank you. Hello, Kelly. Uh, okay. Yes, yeah, Kelly, please go ahead, you. Lisa. Um, I, I do have a question. So as a as a parent um it's also important to know how to um where to guide your children when they report bullying and so i i can see that the schools everybody seems to be against bullying but there isn't really um like a little flashcard maybe for parents to be able to say okay sweetheart you experienced this bullying but here's what you have to do and this is how we address it or this is how your school would like you to address it Right. Because everybody comes, like you said, from different backgrounds. And I think part of the the package that you present should also include the part of the parent so that the parent could complement the school. And we bridge that gap and we can continue to build on equipping the children with what they need to know to be able to defend themselves when they're confronted with a bullying experience. 
Um, but a lot of times parents, we don't have that training unless we're studied in that field and we'll know how to approach it. But if we're not, we're at a loss. So that's the only part that I didn't really see in your in your program. I see bullying, but not really how to help the parents, especially in the lower levels, how to address those issues. That was the only thing I wanted to mention. Yeah, I, I actually, I totally agree with that. And I think that's an experience that my parents have had as well when trying to deal with uh, both of their kids growing up. Um, I do think it would be super great if the school could pr provide SEL resources for parents as well. And I'm, I'm definitely noting that down. Uh, that would be very helpful if they could send like yearly or even quarterly pamphlets to keep the parents updated. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. I really want to thank our presenters from American High School. Thank you for the research that you did. Thank you for the thoughtful organization of your presentation. You you um, presented beautifully and your suggestions were uh, specific and concrete, but also very reasonable and quite diverse. I appreciate that the research you, uh, that you did looking at the different SEL programs um, he and I had been talking on email, and those are the six programs that our Social Emotional Learning Adoption Committee is going to be taking a look at. So we'll make sure we share your thoughts with them, because I'm sure they'll be very interested to hear the student perspective on the different programs that we're looking at. And Tushar, did you want to uh, just lead us in a discussion, or would you like me to do that? Um, yeah, for sure. So basically, now we'll be moving more into the discussion portion. So um, just a reminder from our norms to make sure um, to follow our principle of stepping up and stepping back. So if there's something you want to say, um, if it's meaningful, you can just make it brief since we only have a few more minutes left and we want to hear as many voices as possible. So if there's anything that anyone wants to comment on that they found particularly interesting from the presentation or maybe a question that they had or any thoughts on what you feel you want to be considered when we're adopting a social emotional learning program, that would be really helpful. So you can just go ahead and raise your hand and then we can kind of have a discussion like that. Um, yeah, Arati. Hi, uh, I just want to add a few things. So uh, being a parent, so I had this opportunity to attend a few workshops uh, by this organization called Challenge Success. And I don't know if you know, it's specifically relevant to this curriculum adoption, but I felt like, you know, it was really useful for me in terms of uh, helping my kids to deal with, you know, stressful emotions and in terms of uh, managing uh, all other mental challenges. So um, just want to add to what Lisa has mentioned, like, you know, if it, that's something that, you know, some kind of workshops just for the parents so that they can guide the kids better. So if that is something, you know, we could incorporate in the curriculum, that would be great. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Megan, I don't want to put you on the spot. Is there anything that you would want to say about challenge success? Isn't that the, is that the survey that your um, students took? Okay, so we, we actually just gave this survey um, a couple of weeks ago at American, um, as did uh, a couple of the other high schools, and we'll be getting the results of that from in just a few weeks, um, which is going to help us to, um, to plan and move forward and, and really to inform um, how we support students and um, communicate with families as we move forward. So um, we're excited to see that. And um, yes, we felt the same about challenge success, that it was the right move for us to, to get the information from students that will help us better support them. Great. Thanks, Megan. Can I jump in with a couple other thoughts as, since I'm unmuted? Absolutely. All right, so um, other things, and, and thank you again, guys. I really liked the additions to the presentation since I last saw it. Um, lots of, of good new stuff about programs. Um, uh, in particular, in conversations I've had with the other high school principals about bringing in this type of curriculum, we've been thinking about how best to manage that during the time. And you mentioned health classes, and, and we really want access to this every year for students in high school in particular. Um, so not just limited to something most students take in their freshman year. 
um, taking advantage of flex time, you know, here, or Husky time at Washington, whatever that happens to be on, on the different campuses. Um, and, and that being said, it becomes very difficult if, it, if we're thinking about a digital only platform, because for most schools, they don't have um, that kind of access to, let's say, Chromebooks um, for students. And so if it's not um, something that could easily be done on a student phone or on a Chromebook, if the school has a lot of resources, then we really need a print version of, um, of whatever the curriculum is. But um, we've seen some really good digital models out there. So those that blend the digital, I think, to capture the student interest and, um, and something that works with, um, with the um, technology that the school has is going to be critical. Thanks, Megan. Shilpa, I see your, your hand is raised. Did you want to make a comment? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, guys. I really, I absolutely love the data and all the level of details you had in there. Um, I enjoyed, I really think the idea of including it in the health for high school makes complete, complete logic. And it's something that's easily doable for middle school. Um, just because I am working in a middle school right now, I think um, the curriculum, yes, integration would work. But if it can somehow become a part of the PE, I think that will be easier. The, the content and the academics are so stressed out right now. I don't know if there will be a way to like sort of feed more into it. So um, elementary, yes, I, I think it's going to be doable in elementary. Uh, piggybacking on what Arthi and Lisa said, um, and this is coming from a parent perspective, not as a paraeducator, but uh, Fremont in particular is you know, has the blessing of having so many different diverse backgrounds. But with that also comes challenges because when parents come from a different country, uh, you know, they have certain goals and visions of their own, which fortunately or unfortunately get transferred to their kids too. So when there is success, we blow our trumpet and announce it. But when we have a difficult challenge, we don't talk about it. So um, I think parent education if not more, is equally important as the student education in this. So it's, you know, it's almost like a 50-50 or even, I think the students are very well aware and they're more forgiving of themselves and their peers. But parents become very hard on themselves. They take it personally. And so educating the parent becomes more important than educating the child at that point. Sorry about that. But... <laughs> So I think having parent education, whether it's through your PTSAs or teachers or flyers, is going to be equally important. Yeah, and if I could. Oh, sorry, Mahiti, you want to go ahead? Yeah, I was just wondering uh, that this is actually something that we've been considering for a while now. But I guess since we haven't had the opportunity to interact with many parents personally, we were wondering how would you as parents be uh, engaged or how would you like to see it come, like in specific methods from the school? Would it be like in workshops or pamphlets or? I don't know if I'm the right parent to say that because in the Indian community that I live in, um, I'm the black sheep because I'm always telling parents you're stressing for no reason. There are bigger problems coming ahead. So, uh, but I think um, what would work is just constant communication and even if that is something as basic as, uh, you know, a link to like this presentation, like if, if you can do a presentation like you just did for us and just recorded it and sent it out to everybody and said that, hey, you know, this is a presentation done by American high students. And it could even just start with American and then the word moves forward. Um, your parents are probably on at least two or three different WhatsApp groups. So make a video recording and tell them, hey, forward it to your WhatsApp group. And then that WhatsApp group will forward it to the other. So use your viral marketing, get on your Facebook lives. And I think that would be the easiest way to kind of spread the word. And honestly, all you really need is 10 or 15 parents in every school. You don't need like 50 or 100 parents. You change 10 mindsets, you'll change, start changing the mindset of that school. Great. 
Thank you. We've got about two more minutes for questions and we've got two hands raised. So hopefully we'll be able to get both of those. Yajing, I see your hand. And then Lisa will take you as our final commenter. Yes, I, I really uh, impressed with the students' presentation. It's uh, brilliant and it's well researched. Thank you so much. Um, I'm thinking that the peer pressure not happens to students, but also happens to parents. So I think it's a great idea. We not only, you know, you know, cause uh, get the awareness of the students, but also parents. In the same uh, way, we should have uh, parents talk about this. Maybe we the parents can volunteer to write something, and we can also share from the students' perspective and also from parents' perspective. Um, maybe a, a forum, you know, a, a chat whatever. I think that's great. I love that idea. Peer pressure. Absolutely. Thank you, Yajing. Lisa, love to hear what you've got to say. Uh, yes, uh, in response to, um, uh, is it Makita? How do you say your name? Mejica. Mejica. I'm sorry, Mejica. So Mejica, in response to your, your question, I, I, for, for one, I think having like a little flyer maybe that tells me, okay, your child reported bullying to you today. The, this is step one. This is step two. <laughs> this is how you approach it. If that doesn't resolve the issue, this is the next level. And this is where you need to go. You know what I mean? Like, I think that would be more beneficial, <laughs> you know, and then maybe stating to notify the uh, counselor as soon as something gets reported at the house so that then they can do whatever research needs to be done depending on the level of bullying um so it can be approached in a in a timely manner and pro appropriately right because the other side of it is that the bully might just be a child that doesn't know how to read uh, is having problems in a, in a subject and might have insecurities that's causing the child to act out in that manner and they may not know how to emotionally describe what they're experiencing. So they too need support. So everybody gets that support needed at the right time. Thank you. Great, thank you, Lisa. Thank you all again very much for your presentation. It was interesting, it was informative, and I know that we could talk for uh, much longer if we had a longer meeting. Uh, so thank you to all of our students for coming tonight and, and presenting this information. You guys are, of course, welcome to hang out for the rest of the meeting. There's just a few minutes left. It's just going to be committee business. Or you are welcome to um, sign off and go about enjoying your evening, doing your homework, maybe getting a little bit of dinner. <laughs> Who knows? So thank you so much for coming and joining us tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having us. Tushar, I, I think I need to do a little bit of business here because mm -hmm. I didn't start the recording when I was supposed to. So I'm concerned that the votes that we took earlier that should have been recorded in the chat may not have been. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask people to just go back and um, do a couple things in the chat, if you don't mind. So first for that special determination meeting. Will you please re-enter in your chat your vote of yes, we want to stay online or no, we uh, we want to come out of line or come offline. I'm sorry. Kim, I'm sorry because I wasn't here. So am I allowed to vote on this? I would say no. Okay. Yeah, because you weren't here at that at that point. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Then the next thing was um we had the approval of the minutes. If you don't mind, just re-enter your vote for approving the minutes. And then, um, strangely enough, if you don't mind just typing presence, present, so uh, we have a, re a record of who was here in the meeting and everyone could do that regardless of whether you joined us partway into the meeting or whatever. So go ahead and just type present into the chat.
All right, thank you very much. All right, Tushar, I'm gonna turn it back over to you. Um, I'll screen share again. And yeah, thank you. Yeah. So we just have a couple of things left to do in today's meeting in the last couple of minutes. Um, first, I just wanted to remind everyone that if there's any volunteers to take minutes for next month's meeting in December, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, as Shilpa talked about earlier, um, it's really not that difficult. Just it helps you keep stay engaged in the meeting if you take notes throughout. So are there any volunteers who would like to take minutes for next month's meeting? And you won't have to do it for the entire year. We can go on that monthly rotational basis if that if you're more comfortable with that. Yeah, Arati. Yeah, I would be happy to take up this role for the next month, and I hope I could use all your help, Kim. Great. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm, I'd be glad to help you do that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. So now that we have that out of the way, um, we also need to discuss our meeting location for our December meeting. So as you know, we discussed earlier that um, we held this meeting online for practicality with parent-teacher conferences. But um, one of the main reasons that we're supposed to hold these meetings online is um, if there are some health and safety concerns. So that being said, this table kind of outlines um, some of the reasons to either have in-person meetings or online meetings. We also showed this at our October meeting. So would, and based on these, you can kind of think it over uh, and consider whether you'd like to have an in-person meeting where we can kind of be face-to-face, -face, have discussions in smaller groups, or stay online where we're in more of a bigger group speaking one by one. So based on those different criteria, does anyone have a motion on whether to have our December meeting in person or online? And, and remember that really legally, the one reason we're allowed to be online is if we feel that there is um, a, a health or a safety concern. So if you were to make a motion that we uh, meet online next month, it would need to be related to that. Lisa, I saw that you put in the chat in person. Are you making a motion? Yes, a motion for in person. All right, okay. thank you. And do we have a second to that motion? I'll second the motion. Thank you. So now um, we have a motion and a second. So you can go ahead and type in the chat yes if you would like an in person meeting for December or no if you would prefer online for health and safety reasons. And it looks like that motion carries. So our December meeting for the CNI committee will be in person. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's on December 21st. Yes, it's on December 21st. Yeah, December 21st, Tuesday at 4.30 p.m. So I think that is it for today's meeting. All right. Thank you very much, Tushar. I appreciate your um, running this meeting for us. And thank you to everybody who, who came tonight. I uh, won't see you again until after the Thanksgiving holidays and any other holiday that you celebrate in the next month or so. So I wish you um, the happiest of holidays. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Um, to share a quick question, who was the person mm -hmm. who seconded the motion? Just so I have it in the minutes. Uh, just now it was Jorge Gonzalez. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys, signing off. Yeah, thank you for-